effort if it wasn't for AOC. She also tweeted, to get the virus under control, we need to pay people to stay home. Well, let's see what everyone thinks about that. Let's bring in our company on this Friday, the executive director of USA Strong, Aaron Elmore, and healthcare analyst and author of The Cure, A Blueprint for Solving America's Healthcare Crisis, Seth Denson. All right, guys. Um, look, I, I get it. I don't want anyone, I don't want anyone to lose their home. I, I, can't, I mean, it's, it, it would be tragic, right? But I also think that, like, everything can't be free. Right. Um, there's a reason we have charities. And I hope to God that anybody that is having a difficult time because of their job and because of covid and et cetera, that, that there are organizations out there that can help them. Um, but but when you start canceling rent, this is the problem with so many of the folks on the left, that it is not a one sided equation. Somebody owns that building. They have a mortgage payment to make. They may be a single, a landlord that made that as an investment. Maybe a family bought a townhouse uh, or a second home as an investment for their kids to go to college. I don't know, Seth. But the point is, is that these discussions are so ridiculous from the squad. Free college, free health care, free cable, you know, uh, free everything. But it's it's not free. Somebody's paying for it. And in this case, in many cases, it's a landlord that, that has a mortgage themselves. Well, that's right. And and what I don't really understand here is, is this just a talking point for Twitter or is this? I think we should give them a free economics lesson because rent and mortgages, they are legally binding contracts that you are obligated to pay under law. And by the way, we're not talking about a Netflix subscription or a dinner reservation here. These are big things like mortgages and rent payments that you cannot simply cancel. There are economic impacts. There are social impacts. There are societal impacts. We can't just put the word free in front of something and make it sound logical because that's not how the world works. Um, Seth, I've got to ask you about this. The president had a huge announcement today on prescription drugs, something he's been working on for a while now. You're a healthcare expert. What did you make of his announcement? Yeah, I think anything we can do to rein in uh, the pharmaceutical industry and drug prices is, is, is powerful. What I don't necessarily you know, Aaron, um, I it was thinking about this today. You've got the president rolling out these vaccines, right? Pfizer announcing today that they're asking for emergency, uh, whatever they do at the FDA, but basically they'll be able to roll it out. The president then today had this multi-pronged uh, announcement about bringing down the price of prescription drugs. Do you think he's going to get the credit he actually deserves for doing this things? I mean, you know the president almost better than anyone. Does he ever get credit for anything? No, of course not. And their convenient announcement when the vaccine was ready after the Biden victory, so to speak, was really ill-timed. I think the other thing that the president should do is focus on the fact that 97% of our antibiotics and pharmaceuticals are made in China. The president should sit down with these pharmaceutical companies and say, you need to bring these manufacturing jobs back to the United States. We are having a difficult time with our middle class. This is the perfect way to revitalize our middle class, bring jobs back to this country and help the pharmaceutical companies look really, really good in the process. So I think that's something that the president should do, he will do, and once again, won't get credit for it. You know, so I know uh, I'm 100% was- on board it. Deaths give us permission to be mad over these super spreader moments, surely. You know, Seth, real quick, I don't have we don't have a lot of time left, but it's interesting how all those super spreader events seem to come at the expense of the president of the United States. But none of the people who are out celebrating Joe Biden's uh, election night. All right. That's we're right. definitely going to be talking right. more about that. All right. Company quiz is up next. Aaron and Seth will be back. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. I know we have a ton of new viewers, so here's how this works. I take some stories making headlines in the news and ask related trivia questions. Here to play and back with us, of course, is Executive Director of USA Strong, Aaron Elmore. And Lindsay, come on, join in as well. Are you guys all ready? Ready. All right. All right, question one. The U.S. General Services Administration, or GSA, as it's normally called, is responsible for many things, including giving out office space and helping the government with its budget. The GSA is also the agency in the government that leads the presidential transition. The idea for the GSA started in 1947 when President Harry Truman asked a former president to head a commission to reorganize the operations of the federal government, which U.S. president oversaw the creation of the GSA, A, Herbert Hoover, B, Calvin Coolidge, D, Teddy Roosevelt, or D, William Howard Taft. 
All right, let's get those letters up. Show me what you got. Come on. I just saw a quiz about animals on my screen. So there were like rats um, yeah. and different things like that. I, 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 oh my gosh, what a way to start off a Friday. Everybody gets it right. That's right. Herbert Hoover, he did it. He led a commission on reorganizing the federal government and ended up combining at least five different agencies into one big administration. All right, guys, way to start. Question two, we spoke about the MAGA march last weekend, whose participants clashed with counter-protesters near Black Lives Matter Plaza. The area is bordered to the south by Lafayette Square, cordoned off by a large security fence since this summer. The park is known for five magnificent statues, but it was famously overrun by what animal critters in the 1970s? A, raccoons, B, rats, C, mice, or D, squirrels? Hmm. Come on, get those letters up. Let's get them up. Well, Dad, someone went and got that nut, and that well, was Seth Denson. That's right. Wow. He got it to squirrel. All right, Seth. Yeah, that's right. The uh, people been mentioning all week that Newsmax has not called the election yet. We know that the president is required to deliver a State of the Union address to the Congress, usually given in person. Someone from the opposing political party, though, is chosen to give a response to that address. Who was the first African-American woman to deliver a response to the State of the Union? Was it A, Eleanor Holmes Norton, B, Shirley Chrisham? C, Stacey Adams, or D, Maxine Waters? Let's get those letters up. All right, Seth and Lindsay both getting it right. That's right, C, Stacey Adams, in February of 2019. Dr. Sebastian Gorka stood in Freedom Plaza as he spoke to that pro-Trump million MAGA march in D.C. last weekend, surrounded by thousands of President Trump supporters. He may or may not know that he was standing near a time capsule buried underneath the plaza where he was speaking. That time capsule, due to be opened again in the year 2088, contains personal items that belong to what famous American activist? A, Willie Guthrie, B, Martin Luther King Jr., C, Albert Einstein, or D, Jeanette Rankin? Let's get those letters up. Come on, guys. Wow, we're back on a roll. Everybody's right. That's right. All right. Seth Denson's up 4-3 to 2. That's right. Uh, Dr. King worked on his famous I Have a Dream speech. Thanksgiving is always held in the U.S. on the last Thursday of every November. This date was a tradition in most states, even before President Lincoln made it an official holiday in 1863. In fact, it coincided with another popular holiday celebrating the British finally leaving the U.S., after the Revolutionary War. What was the name of that holiday? A, Patriots Day, B, Victory Day, C, Liberty Day, or D, Evacuation Day? Let's get those letters up. I know you're probably like Googling over there. Oh, I've got three A's and three wrong answers. It was evacuation day, folks. You wouldn't no. have thought that on November 25th. All right, we just spoke to Franklin Graham, whose father, of course, was the infamous preacher, Billy Graham. Billy Graham is the fourth private citizen to lie in honor at the Capitol. Remember, you lie in honor if you're a private citizen, you lie in state if you're in the government. The first two private citizens to lie in honor were the officers Jacob J. Chestnut and Detective John M. Gibson, who were killed by a gunman in the Capitol in 1988. Remember, those were folks going after uh, Congressman Tom DeLay. Uh, who was the third private citizen to lie in honor, though? Was it A, Rosa Parks, B, Neil Armstrong, C, Coretta Scott King, or D, John Wayne. Get those letters up, guys. Let's get. Oh, we're going back with the A's, whatever this SAT thing you got going. But you all got it right. That's right. It was Rosa Parks. She died in 2005. Now, you are up one point, my friend, to Lindsay. This is a big deal. No one has ever gone four times in a row, Seth Denson. Four <laughs> times in a row. We don't even have a prize for this yet. <laughs> All right. Question seven. 
All right, all right, all right. Matthew McConaughey said this week that he might run for governor of Texas. Which other celebrity ran for governor of New York? Was it A, John Stewart, B, Joe DiMaggio, C, Howard Stern, or D, Whoopi Goldberg? Let's get those letters up. Oh, my goodness. The only person that's right... Ella, Aaron, you nabbed it. That's right. You got it right. Oh, Howard yeah. Stern. Above all, but, but here's the kicker. Everyone that we mentioned did run for it, but Howard Stern ran as a libertarian and had three major goals. One, to reinstate the death penalty. Two, to stagger tolls to reduce traffic in New York. And three, to carry out road work throughout the night. Uh, that means Seth Denson, though, even though wow. you got that last question wrong, you hung on, Seth Denson. By a thread, winning an unprecedented fourth consecutive company quiz. I want to thank Have my a mom, beer on me. my you teacher, have one? my aunt yeah, Joe, who always made me training. play Trivial Pursuit. Where's yes, the champagne? <laughs> Congrats, Seth. Do you, I want to. I, I'm glad you have. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great weekend. I appreciate you being here. Lindsay and I will be right back after the break. <laughs> 